What is going on guys? Uh, in this video, I want to discuss the 304 not modified status code. Some of you asked me a question that they, hey, we're seeing this uh, status code return from our uh, inbound traffic, outbound traffic in our cloud provider, and then we don't know what it is. And I talked about uh, 304 not modified in one of my video when I discussed eTag. Check out the video right here. I'm going to reference it, but in this video, I'm going to just show you how, what it is, why do we have it, and then kind of show you some code to reproduce it and then understanding better. How about we jump into it? So 304 in a nutshell, not modified, is a code that is returned by the server to tell the client that, hey, whatever you have of that requested resource that you just requested is actually good, right? So 304 not modified is actually empty, but it doesn't have anybody, and anybody, <laughs> doesn't have any content. It just tells you that, hey, your content is good. Keep caching it. It's a caching mechanism. All right. So let's go ahead and, and uh, explain that. So what I'm going to go go to example.com to demonstrate that. So this is an example.com website. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, go to the console here. All right, guys. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to make a fetch command. And the reason I am in the same domain just to avoid course errors. Uh, things like that and i'm gonna do basically ma make a fetch command to the same content and uh, literally just print the response header and uh, return a dot text because i know the content is text so i'm gonna return it and i'm gonna print the headers and everything that we come back and then just since we know that the content is text because it's an html page that should work and here's what we get back we got back the response object and uh, it's a status 200 and we go to the network you can see that this is what we made the request that we made is uh, basically it's just uh, a get request and we asked for this and we said hey by the way if you if you support that stuff go ahead and, and fetch it to me and this if the server supports caching here's what we'll reply with it's gonna reply with the content which is the response in this case that HTML we saw and here's what we'll return it returns something called the e-tag so that e-tag represents a hash of the content that returns that the HTML page in this case and uh, every web server uh, implements this differently to be honest right uh, it really depends on the web server some web servers literally hashes the content some web server implements really cryptographic inform uh, algorithms uh, if that if that if that e tag is actually a result of of a hash of a cache really right cache result or maybe a database query you don't know right so you need an algorithm to spits out this e tag right and most of the time if it's a static content it's taken care of uh, for you but if it's JSON or something that you build you have to do it yourself as the back end engineer. But regardless, so now we have an e tag that represent, represent uniquely that content. So the client takes that e tag and says, hey, I am going to make a request again to the server, but here's what I'm going to do. I am going to tell the server, hey, server, I want example.com. And by the way, I did make a request a few seconds ago to this, right? But uh, but please tell me, does this e tag that I have is called if, if none match? You send I send a header with that e tag, and I tell the and I basically tell the servers, hey, if you didn't find a match for this e tag, return the content for me. If it if you did, tell me that it didn't change so I keep the cached version that I have because. You're gonna cache this stuff locally, right? That the HTML page or the JSON document or the PDF or whatever, right? I had to add these double quotes because that's the content. That's one. That's just part of the e tag. For some reason, I didn't include the quotes, huh? Right. So now, if I do this now, if I hit enter, look what the server responds to me. It didn't respond with the content at all. It said, "Hey, status 304 not modify," and it that means whatever copy of the version that I have is actually good i'm not don't bother and send me a new version right but if i said for example let's change this to something else right that means let's say this is a copy that is an old e-tag 
right? And the version of the server actually changed, right? When I hit that, the server will actually say, no, you, your e-tag is bad and use this now. And it's gonna send me just a normal 200, uh, okay? All right, so what's the advantages and disadvantages of this? So if you implement e-tag, and most browsers just implement it for you by default, you don't have to worry about it. Some browsers just naturally, if it's a GET request, e-tags are unsupported for, doesn't make any sense with post requests, if you think about it, right? It's just GET, right? And uh, yeah, what you, what you get in, in return is basically lower network latency because you don't send this big responses back of the server. So that's a good thing, right? And uh, another thing is uh, just the client will be more efficient in this case because it doesn't have to reparse that content from the server and, and restore it and then maybe recheck it and implement all the validation that has to do locally. So yeah, e-tags are, are very, very good in this case, right? So the, the bad thing about this is it really, that request, if, if it did hit the cache, and the server side, the e tag is matched, right? Then if it's a static file, we don't really worry about much about it, right? Because it's just, yeah, it's a, literally a hash of the static content, right? So we'll just return them. However, if you implement a specific caching algorithm that you have to hit the database to fetch the content to actually hash it, then you, then you, you need to start to worry about it as a backend engineer, just and maybe implement some caching algorithm and some caching uh, and validation. Another cons, I guess, a problem, and if, especially if you have a load balancer in front of these puppies, right? If you have a load balancer in front of these puppies, and an e-tag e generation between servers can actually uh, be different because the load balancer, you might hit a load balancer that has server one, and that server one generates the e-tag, right? But then, if you uh, if the client comes back with the e-tag and the resource didn't change, but the load balancer brought the e-tag to another server and the server has the completely different uh, caching, not caching, regenerate hash regeneration or e-tag regeneration algorithm for that resource, despite the resource didn't change, right? You you will take the head to actually deliver the full resource back to the content. When I say resource, HTML page, JSON, all that jazz, right? So yeah, uh, even different versions of the web server can matter here. So make sure those versions are identical. Some versions, some some implementation of the uh, server, I know it's Apache, it's like it uses the IP address, which is a bad idea to to kind of to kind of salt things together with the IP address. It's just like, no, don't do that because your IP address will be definitely different. The, the the server's IP address will be different. So yeah, that's what that's what I can think of, guys. What do you, what else uh, did I miss, guys? Let me know in the comment section below. Uh, do you use e-tags at all? Uh, if not, let me know in the comment section below. I am going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.